my gosh. Here I am driving around Columbia again. Got myself turned around once more, trying to figure out where I'm going. Ah, this is looking better than what it did. It's a beautiful day outside today. Uh, it kind of feels like I ought to stop and meet somebody new here, but but who in the heck am I gonna am I gonna find to to meet in my day that I haven't met before in a completely unplanned meeting? Oh my gosh, it's a State Farm agent on the side of the road right there. Oh, I, I should stop and and pick them up. <laughs> Oh, they're getting in the car, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Probably better help with that. I can't figure that thing out either. How are you? I'm great, how are you doing? Oh my gosh, it's it's Phyllis Nichols with State Farm. What in the world? So here here we go. I guess I guess you're accepting your ride. <laughs> We're taking a taking a little tour of Columbia. Oh uh, yeah, let's check it out. And yet another completely unplanned meeting. Um uh, so drive <laughs> around here and I Try not to wreck. Okay. Drive, drive my insurance rates up. So, so how are you doing? You know what? I'm doing fantastic. How about how about you? Cool. I'm doing good. Uh, well, as I'm driving around and just randomly picking up people of, of a professional nature right there doing their jobs out there, I thought I would see with a State Farm agent kind of what your thoughts were, what you're seeing out there as far as like, uh, I don't know, major trends in the insurance agent or agency right now that are kind of of interest and, you know, what your thoughts were, like what you're seeing, I guess. No, that's that's perfect. And it's a great question, Hayes. What, what we're seeing right now, um, people basically just want to be met where they are. They, mm -hmm. you know, they want... Um, they want something that's fast. Right. They, they want something that's affordable. Right. And they want something that has some self-service options to go with it. And, and so what, what drives that is the digital world right now has just blown wide open. Yeah. And we're already in a really competitive industry. Yeah. And so it, it, as it continues to heighten, though, the customers say, we're okay with giving you a ton of data, but use it to save us money. And, and hmm. we also have to be really careful with all that data that we have. We've got to protect it, right. and, and yet again, use it for the uh, for the good of the customer. And, and so that's what's really driving right now. The, the digital technology is heightening and heightening, and, and uh, who knows where it's going to lead us. But but that's the biggest trend that's going on right now. So then, the with a data driven trend like that, um, I mean, I guess the question is, I mean, obviously State Farm is using you know that information to kind of predict you know where the market's going, what customers need, and so on and so forth there. Um, but that kind of also leads into, I mean, another question there I'd have for you, and this is more like an observation opinion type thing, but with what we're seeing in Florida right now, I mean, there's a real decline in insurance off, uh, services being offered down there. I mean, you can be on either side of the climate change <laughs> coin, but you're probably on it on the same side, whether you realize it or not. Um, so people in Florida right now, for example, are just, there's a lot that are not be able, being able to get insurance. Are you as an agent right now seeing that as a trend, as a sign of things to come, or what are you seeing there? And, and I do truly see that as a um, sign of things to come, because what happens is when, especially when you're in an area that continually gets hit by Mother Nature, right. it is so hard to become and, and stay rate adequate right. to uh, properly protect the people. And so I, I do believe that... Um, even though there's there is a state um, treasure fund or however you want to say that that right. you know that companies that are there have to pay into, it is still going to become increasingly harder to get access to that. Right. And yeah. And I mean, so our I mean, we're starting to see things in our area. For example, like you know, the entire town of Woldridge, or a very good portion of it, this last year burned to the ground via a wildfire that was exacerbated by incredibly dry conditions also really high winds. Um, my wife and I were actually out there um, on the day this happened at the Peachtree Farm, just, you know, north of where that was located. Yes. And, I mean, we were out there and then it's, we were both commenting it really was hot and dry out that day. And then next thing we know, we're seeing a tower of smoke down towards Walters that looked like somebody dropped a 500-pound bomb. Ugh. And, you know, we just got done getting hit with yet another big darn hailstorm here what are yeah. what are you seeing i guess on the back side of the whole the whole hailstorm thing and, and, and one thing i do try to um i try to stay in contact with my customers and and just say you know obviously always looking for discounts and stuff for them but more importantly just saying 
Hayes, you know, have you have you looked at like the trees that are surrounding your home or different things? If there's some that are maybe a little close, mm -hmm. uh, trim them up a little bit, or if there's anything like if, if there is a couple of shingles that that do blow off, I always just say, you know, please find someone to carefully put them back up there for you and just and just maintain the home as well as you can because Mother Nature's not going to give us very many, uh, many breaks and so um, I've even had folks because I do have some insured woolridge and I just say boy keep those lawns as well as you can um, moistened you know however you have to do that just because right. they are always in uh, danger of wildfires and right. uh, so I do try to um, talk to people about protective measures like that and, and I'm always glad to give them suggestions of their particular home yeah is State Farm or any other insurance company starting to think like in terms of like, okay, we got another hail you know, storm this year. And I mean, I don't know what percentage of the town really got seriously hit or anything like that, but are they starting to think in terms of like recommending anything beyond like the trim the tree branch thing back? Like any like, is it like a put a protective covering on your roof or something like that? Or I, I any think, technology out there like that? I mean, I'm, I'm reaching, I know on that, but. And, and, and that's okay. I mean, I think, you know, we're always, and even obviously as a consumer myself, I'm always thinking of trying to put on the best uh, materials that you can afford, like a, you know, like a architectural, right. even a 50 year shingle, some, right. you know, something like that. Or, or I will tell you, we've got a lot of folks going with metal roofs right. in our area, right. because then what happens is it may sustain some damage, but not near the damage that a comp shingle will will sustain during a hail storm and, and, gotcha. and they don't leak um, in the same manner that a uh, composition roof would. So I think there's a you know a lot of movement towards that and we're seeing that. So here's another crazy question on that too. Um, like solar panels, if you've got them up, how durable are you seeing those being in the midst of a hail storm? Because I would have to believe you probably heard somebody got hit with, you know, having solar panels on the roof. Uh, what, what's been your experience as far as how durable can, can they hold up and take hail strikes to a degree or what do you think? And, and knock on wood, we have had some that have, have sustained some hail hits, but right. I always tell folks, please let me know that you have solar panels put on there and then we literally go in and account per panel, you know, what it costs you to put it on because we highly suspect with, with the higher winds and just the susceptibility to weather mm -hmm. that at some point they're going to they're going to, you know, cave in and, and Mother Nature will win again. Oh, okay. So, I mean, the solar panels wouldn't wouldn't offer you any kind of a shield for the actual roof itself or not really? It, it, I mean, it does to some extent, but right. um, I, I, again, it's, it's a little different than like, say, um, metal just because it, you know, it's, it's got a little bit of um, just more curvature if I want to put it in, the, in those terms. And so right. it definitely will offer some. Right, right. But, but at some point, again, it's going to, you know, it's just going to say, okay, I've had enough. Um, when it gets a little older, mm -hmm. it's going to become a little more brittle, and then we're just going to have to uh, look at replacing some of those anyway. Gotcha. Okay. So that could become a part of the claim there and, for sure. And, yeah. and, absolutely. Because the, the folks that I've spoken with, they're looking at it more for the savings on utilities. Right. Right. Gotcha there. So ultimately, like a metal roof is probably going to be the most indestructible we, thing. yeah yeah exactly and we right. are starting to see that even even on some higher dollar homes right they're, they're starting to go that direction because they don't want to have to keep like every other year um you know going, oh my gosh now i'm gonna to have to put on half of a roof or, or right. all of a roof and so we that's become a very common trend so another another question within that too not to hover too long on roofs but it's kind of a thing right now right right, um, right. so if you're talking about like a rubber i don't know quite how to say this but it's like a rubber comp white composite not composition the like EDPO? Roll, yeah yeah that one the, uh, is that going to be any less expensive to work with because we got these newer style houses these contemporary style houses where they've got like these flat style roofs and so sure. forth there would that be less or more i mean generally very generally speaking um as far as the cost uh to to go ahead and replace one of those things and i'll be honest with you they are expensive yeah. but they are pretty durable because they've got a they got a protective coating over the top of them right and because they're they're built of a rubberized material anyway right. they're going to be a little more flexible than than that you know composition itself okay and so again not to, not that they can't get worn out because right. they can and big enough hail will still damage them right. and they are very expensive but right. at the same time they 
tend to last longer. That's why you see commercial risk put put a lot of those on. Do you think? Do you think? I mean, that being said, I mean, could you, in theory, then more easily repair those, perhaps, than you could, or is that not really a thing? You know, a lot a lot of times what they're able to do, and I'm not saying this is always, but sometimes they're able to just to put a, another protective layer on, on there gotcha. uh, that, that kind of helps um, build back what's left there. Gotcha. But again, they you know they can be very expensive to uh, get to replace and repair all together. So right. some folks are like, that's kind of out of my realm of affordability. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then the other the other question I was going to hit you up with today was across all the years you've been doing. I mean, how many total years have you been in the industry I, doing this? I've been doing this for thirty six years. Wow. So just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit. So the craziest claim that you could ever talk about. <laughs> What, what what have you seen out there? What was the nuttiest nuttiest story that you, you've seen or anything like that? I was just kind of curious what your experience had been. And, and I think so far, this is, and this is really kind of the crazy part of it. It happened my first week in agency. So right. let's go back, clear back to 1995. Oh I had a brand new agent. Right. And I had just written what, what we refer to as a builder's risk policy that, that had um, already, you know, gotten up a above the framing status or whatever and had quite a bit of it uh, along the way. Right. A subcontractor was mad at the insured and set it on fire. Oh, wow. And so, <laughs> I, I just, I, my gosh, I think I was just in shock, number one. Um, right. I didn't have any, any seasoning behind me that kind of prepared me for, how do I handle that? Uh, so <laughs> I think there was a lot of craziness that was involved in that, but you know, over the years, you kind of, you do see a lot of things and so oh yeah all, all you know is that you know you've got to protect the customer that's our number one yeah. number one deal and, and that's, um, that's pretty much and, it yeah I've, I've seen more than a few stories in real estate that I'd, I'd surely love to write a book but I'm like oh, I'd have to change a lot of names I, and <laughs> to protect the innocent or the not so innocent yeah, right? <laughs> yeah yeah I'd, I'd probably and then I'm like maybe I won't write that book <laughs> I, I, I think you'd have to move or something or, yeah, or yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm like no no that's just gonna be something I'll know and there you go but anyway well thank you very much for taking a well, ride with me by the way today I, I appreciate it and I was just kind of curious to get your thoughts I, on things. I appreciate the questions, and, and like you say, we're always uh, glad to help with any knowledge that we have. All right, cool. Well, you have a good day. I will I will let you off where I found you right here. So. All right. Thank you so much. You enjoy the rest of your day. You too.